You're listening to the Kingdom Flow Podcast. I'm Kyle Jones. And I'm Ian Sperry. Now more than ever, we're in a time where Christians need to rise up. Business owners and corporate executives have a great opportunity to capture hearts by living out their faith, holding the line that's being challenged every day. Listen in as we work to uncover ways to help you live your life by design and challenge the norm by breaking down barriers and truly encouraging you to go all in on your faith. Also, don't forget to leave a review and subscribe to the show on the platform of your choice. Let's go. Lord Jesus, we just uh, come before you just with hearts full of gratitude today. Father, we just uh, want to honor you with this conversation that we're about to have, and we pray that somebody will be impacted by it and just be motivated to draw closer to you through the conversation that we're about to have. And uh, Lord, we're grateful for Jennifer, grateful for her story, and we just uh, give all glory to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yes, so... That's right. Another guest, Jennifer Foster, is here with so us. So glad to be here. Thank yeah. you Very so excited. much. So we'll get into some of the questions, but as as always, we kind of start off lighthearted. They usually pick on me, is what it usually uh, is. And this is kind of going that direction. <laughs> but oh, you, and, and oh, no. I, I know my friend very well. Uh. And I know how uh, sometimes he can be in certain situations because we've known each other for a while. And um, I'm curious because I, I first met you when you were at his house designing his house, uh, the new house that he's in now. You were yeah, helping him Jenna design because that, that's, yeah. that's, your, that's your business now. And um, so I'm curious. What was it like designing a house for Ian Sperry? Because because <laughs> oh, I know this, I know this about nice, my friend. Be nice, Jennifer. Be nice. I know oh this. Gosh. I know this about my friend. He says he doesn't care. Um, oh, but I love then, this. but oh, then he the, he, cares. he jumps. He cares. He, cares. he does. Care. Oh, I'm like okay. I got telling you a little bit. Ian. No, God. no, they are amazing to work with. Mm. I love his family. His little ones are just so precious, so cute. But no, Thank he you. he cares. What was funny about you he was like i don't care i don't care just get it done like whatever you want whatever you want just get it done <laughs> and then it was like well but wait a minute what are we doing here wait what are we doing here what are we doing here yeah. like you care you I want have, to absolutely. know the details but i also i get that i so get that because he's a leader um and i appreciate the way he leads and um so it's like yes like we, we got to go 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 like i want to get it done but you're also in the details. You just kind of all over I, everything. I, he absolutely is. <laughs> it, so it yeah. shocked me through this process of of the house in general. Oh my gosh! How much I was in. I didn't think I was a details guy. I really didn't. Yeah. I think most controlling um, uh, type A personalities don't think they're in the details. They're like, yes. oh, we're big picture. Let's just roll. You know. Yeah. And and it was, but then it was very much like. So I did notice that from this whole process. And I'm like. Man, I do kind of. It was fun to watch just... though because you would like press the gas and then let off. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay, oh, no, yeah. no, 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 I'll let, I'll let her There's handle this. certain things where yeah. he won't, but for the most part, he he's kind of no. I yeah, love it, he's but gonna it was know. great. <laughs> well, it was but, great. You did a great job on the home. And, and, well, then I was going to say, I hope he can say the same about me. Like, oh yeah. You know, oh, yeah. Everything is always a learning experience, especially when you work with people. Yeah. And so you know, I feel like we had um, it was just great, and we were able to talk to each other. And yeah, yeah and Michaela so, did a really right. good job of yeah, she did. You know, and just kind of set, yeah. Yes, she kept the steadiness she, from the she's from the side. Yes, she's she's my steady hand. <laughs> she was <she's> right here. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, we we ha had a designer that uh, we worked with. I, I'm actually in the real estate side. I, we developed properties and ground up. So had I known that there was a deeper connection there, we would have we would have because you're. It seems like the style is very similar to what what our designer came yeah, up with as well. So yeah. you guys did you you did a great hey, job. There's on always theirs. next time. You know. So, in like 10 yeah. years, yeah, you're yeah. ready to do no, everything. No, hey, hey, we, we, we are building <laughs> other projects. So well, let's I'll go. say that. So. <laughs> That's good. But uh, we're kind of on this kick here where you're you're now the, the third female guest we've had. I love and, that. And we've, we've responded to what the listeners are, are what we're seeing in, in the statistics that we've, we've mentioned this before, that we've got a good chunk of female listeners out there. Yes. Love and it. so we wanted to bring... Um, bring other females in, you know, we know that when we talk about kingdom flow and living in the spiritual flow, it's, it's not just about men, although men are, are tasked with leading the, the charge. Um, we know that it, it very much encompasses, um, the female population mm -hmm. for sure. And yeah. there's, there's different aspects of just overall giftings that, um, 
we we all I've learned so much from you know we we're talking about some of the podcasts that we listen to as well. There, I can think back to some female interviews on that that I've just learned so much yes. from on. So uh, I think we'll I think we'll accomplish some of that today. So, um, but I mean I, I think a lot of people may or may not know who you are. Um, you have you've you've gone through some adversity. You you were a transplant here, coming over to essentially plant a church. I really don't know that that story yeah. about how you ended up here. You mentioned you're from Monroe, Louisiana. Yes. Cajun, so another Cajun. You're not everything that, good from Louisiana. I, I, she made a great Are point. Are you claiming me? That's I not, think I'm accepting you, you into me? the yes. I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 the first she's real not, Cajun to claim like Monroe, Louisiana. Yeah. 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 <laughs> when I think of Monroe, I just I I think of Uncle Si. Oh my I think gosh, they si. yeah. put us and, uh, on the map. Yes, <laughs> Uncle I si love it. From, from Duck Commander. Yes, uh, Duck, Duck Dynasty. Dynasty yeah. It is Duck Commander, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But um, tell us a little bit more about uh, if that's where you're from, how did that, um, how'd yeah. you end up there? And then and then oh, ultimately how you, how you came here. So born and raised in Monroe, Louisiana. Um, you know, I was raised by my mom. She was a single mom, raised five children, yeah. um, pretty much on her own. And um, we were poor, you know, live in Louisiana, but I didn't know we were poor, yeah. you know. And so just had a sweet mama who just tried to hold it all together. But I'm the baby of those five. And, um, you know, I come from just... Um, a world of pain. I, I've, I'm an mm. overcomer. I've had so much happen to me in my past and by the grace of God have just overcome so much, but um, became a, a Christian and gave my life to Jesus when I was 19 years old in West Monroe, Louisiana. And um, shortly after that, I met um, Jeremy Foster, who was a pastor's son. And um, we got married and that was my introduction into um you know, really the church and immediately into ministry. And I didn't even know what any of that meant. Wow. And so I I did things backwards. I had to learn a lot the hard way. And it took me um, a really, really long time to to get there, to find out who I was in Christ and what God had for me. But um, Jeremy and I, we, we were in a different organization, and um, we just felt God pulling us away from that. And uh, He opened the doors for us here in Houston. Wow. And so we moved to Humble, actually, Humble, Texas, okay. and we went on staff. There was like 13 pastors at a staff th um, church there. And so they took us in as one of the pastors. And um, we did ministry, and God called us at that point to do college ministry. So we started something called the 429, and it was amazing. It was crazy. Um, it was wonderful. I mean, I remember, like, there was lines wrapped around the buildings. Wow. We saw explosive growth. Like, God mm -hmm. was really doing something great there. And then it all just went away overnight. And um, we were like in another valley and we didn't know what God wanted to do with our life. And so honestly, we just, we, we prayed for about a year. We just took our time. And um, then God started putting Hope City on our hearts to plant a church in the memorial area of Houston. And so we began to plan and um, we planted Hope City in 2000. 15 and uh, again wow. saw explosive wow. growth, like incredible explosive growth. And I will never forget our first service. You know, we're sitting there and it's time for the doors to open, and there's not a whole lot of people there. Yeah. And we're just like, what is this? Like, we were so nervous. Um, but you know, Houston, Houston people, I love Houston people, yeah. but we're we're always late, it seems, <laughs> seems. But um, about 30 minutes into the worship set, like the whole place was was filled. Wow. And uh, we never stopped. Sunday? Yeah. Wow. Like, we just never, it never stopped. And so, um, you know, we, we did ministry here in Houston for, with Hope City for about seven, almost eight years. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 
That's so, and here I am. I don't think I'll ever go back to Louisiana. I love my Louisiana I, people. Yeah. I miss the food. I have tons of family there, but yeah. I am a Houston girl now. So, right. well, love good. it. Yeah. You yeah. came, you've, we've adopted you. We'll, oh, we'll 100%. That, that. A mutual friend of ours, I didn't know this. I think I told you this, Jennifer, but Ninja Nate. Yeah, Nate. Yeah. I love was a Nate. Part of he your... was 429er. 429er, yes. one, of right. okay. one of the original. One of the original. That sounded familiar. Yeah, yeah. So he told me. We, Such a great guy. I remember guy. that. Previous podcast we did with Ninja, or Ninja, with Nate. Ninja Nate. He would love that. Yes, we, would, would we did it with that. Ninja. He would love it. We did it with. We, we, <laughs> quick side. Day, yeah, we were trying to come up with a different nickname for him. Yeah. And because he said it was Ninja Nate. And I was like, I just don't know if I like that. I don't even remember what we did. Yeah, I don't remember either. But yeah, he told us that he was a part of that original original he deal. Was, yeah, we it was so much like a family, and so I just yeah, I had the fondest memories of yeah. that time. So for if I'm not mistaken, I could the stats could be wrong, but for a season there, we are one of the fastest churching or churches growing in America. Yeah, one hundred percent. I forget the name of the magazine, but it's the magazine that does all the metrics and everything mm -hmm. for church growth. And so we were the fastest growing church um, in America, and uh, that was pretty wild. We we wouldn't allow them to publish it though. Oh really? No, really? We didn't want them. I don't know. I, maybe we just thought oh, we don't want to jinx it or something, sure. which oh. sounds crazy. But we just didn't want it to be out there like that. And what was the members when it was at its peak? Do you remember? Oh, gosh. I, I don't remember when it was at its... I'm trying to think. When that happened, I can't remember the numbers, but I know um, we were 20 plus wow. before mm -hmm. COVID hit. Wow. Yeah. So that would be at its peak. I didn't realize... Yeah. Uh, two things from the story. I didn't realize it was number one, that big. And then number two, I knew it was fast growing. I didn't know it was that high. But And then number two, I didn't realize um, how quickly... It was so quick. Yeah. I, I thought it was like 2010 or, or oh I didn't gosh. realize it was 2015. It was 2015. Yeah. It was explosive. I mean, it was too quick. I mean, yeah. we just, you know, way in over our heads, but we just kept saying yes to everything and just, you know, figured if doors were opening, that was God. And now I, I don't believe that every door is a mm. God door. Um, we should have put on the brakes, but it, it was fast, um, left us upside down in a lot of ways yeah. and, and definitely did a toll on my family. But but it was it was wild. It was a yeah. wild ride. Yeah. So I so those that do know you, Jennifer, they you're you're what has so we we're here and we're in Houston now. We've we've planted a church. It is the fastest growing church in America. It's blowing up. Um, and so that those that do know they either went to the church or, or, or follow you on social media or your, your, your ex on social media, they know something went down. So yeah. we, let's briefly, just because it is a part of your story, yeah, right. Um, and I don't think we should ever be ashamed of, of our story, right. Cause it's unique to all of us. And so, um, share just briefly about, you know, just what kind of what transpired just briefly on that. So we can get a full picture and then we'll dive into really what Kyle and I want to talk about, which is what God's doing in your life now and how sure. incredible it's, you know, sure. you're no, doing. No, so. no, no problem. Well, like I said, 2015, you know, we're planning the church and um, just seeing all kinds of amazing things happen. Um, I have, uh, I'm pregnant, you know, in 2015, I'm, we're giving birth to a church and also to a baby. baby. Wow. And um, then in 2017, here comes another one. And so those were kind of two surprises. And and, um, you know, I have a, already, like I have right now, a 21-year-old and a 22-year-old. So it was a pretty wide yeah. gap and how there. Old, the youngest is how old? So the youngest is six. So my, okay. So yeah. Caleb, I'm so sorry. 22 six. all the way. Literally, my oldest just graduated college this year, <laughs> and my youngest just graduated kindergarten. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't yeah. recommend that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but it's yeah. been yeah. great. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so we're doing all that, and it was explosive growth. I mean, we... We launched one church, and then we waited about a year, and then we launched literally two other campuses within the next year. And those doors kept opening. And like I said, we were like, well, if this is an opportunity, this must be a God opportunity. So mm -hmm. we just kept going that direction, and we ended up having four campuses um, and one in Africa as well. Mm. And um, at that point, you know, People, um, they notice what you're doing and they want to know, well, how, how did you do this? And so um, my husband at the time, Jeremy, you know, just 
lots of opportunity to lead leadership, people wanting to know, like, how did, how did we make this thing work? And um, we didn't know, you know, yeah. like we, we didn't know what we <laughs> Try did. Try to give a good answer, but it's I just, mean, yeah. you, you know, we just, we just did it. Um, but honestly, to answer your question, it was a lot. Yeah. That, that's a lot for, for anybody, for one or even two people to shoulder. And, um, I think I could see the struggle. I could see the struggle even before 2020 with my then husband and the pressure mm. that he was under. Um, but 2020 hit and it you know, took our legs out from underneath mm. us like it did for so many people yeah. and churches really struggled. And, you know, we were, we were trying to jump in. We were trying to do the, the online thing. And, and honestly, every night we were trying to connect to our leaders and just people in our church to just give them some hope. Meanwhile, we were depleting. Mm -hmm. And um, then the racial stuff hit mm -hmm. uh, right after COVID. And we had a very diverse church, um, you know, just racial, the racial stuff has never been an issue with myself or my husband, but all of a sudden, People are wanting us to make um, really big statements oh. and, um, you know, just taking a really hard stance. It was a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and uh, just a lot of hard conversations between people that we would just, you know, call our family yeah. who were so close to us. And I could were see. You, can I clarify? Were you are you talking about? Was there something else going on with Hope City or just like no, what was happening just, in the nation? Just in the like, nation. That was yeah, like the just, George yeah, Floyd. Just being such a big church, yeah. I guess. With yes, the, yeah, the magnifying yes. glass. And people on you. inside yeah. of our church and people who were close just really wanting us to, you know, make these um, huge statements. And my husband just, you know, we, we made appropriate statements, but just felt like we had to stay on our mission of yeah. who God called us to be at the time. And he, he stewarded that really well. But just the pressure of that, yeah. just the pressure of leading through that, I really feel like it was too much for him. Mm. And, you know, I, you know, you, you guys are, you know, you're guys, and I can only speak from a woman's perspective, but I saw the struggle in him really being vulnerable mm -hmm. and really confiding in the people and sharing his pain. Mm. And I don't really think he did that well. Um, I think that he just tried to lead. He always tried to lead and he was just crashing underneath the weight and the pressure. And so our marriage really suffered. And in 2021, um, I discovered that he was having an affair. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, uh, the ending was not one of restoration. Um, I would have been for that, but he just saw no turning back. And honestly, I think I can't speak for him, but I think he just didn't want to be Jeremy Foster anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't think he wanted to, to be a pastor anymore. He just didn't want to do it. Sure. And so he saw a way out and he took it, but I'll never forget. It was, um, it was January the 2nd. It was my birthday when they actually, um, told the church, about the situation. And the night before, Lisa Turkhurst, who is a well-known Christian author and speaker, um, she had been going through a battle of her own. She was going through a divorce, had not really spoken out much about it. And it was, I guess, that weekend that it was final for her. So the night before, she released a statement about her divorce. And she said, sometimes God, God rescues. So sometimes God... Um, um, rehabilitates and sometimes he rescues. Mm -hmm. And for me, this was a rescue mission. And there was just something about that, that I said, that's for me. Mm -hmm. That's for me. And as much as I wish, um, I don't necessarily like being a divorced mom sure. of five in my forties. Um, we had an amazing marriage. I loved my husband. I, we have an amazing life, sure. you know, but when I saw that, I thought, this this is a rescue mission. Like yeah. God, God is for me. God still has good things for me. But um, this is not going to be the the other. This is not going to turn out the other way. This yeah. is a rescue mission. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, uh, uh, one of the things that we actually we we talk about a lot, and I picked up on it, uh, and just challenging really everybody um, is to to be more vulnerable and 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 all the good things that can come from yeah. that. Um, 
I have had to learn to 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 be more vulnerable. And I I really didn't learn that or that didn't even really become a thing for me until my wife and I ended up hiring marriage coaches that we and we still use to this day. And, That's great. And, and we hired them in a time that we didn't we didn't really, you know, wasn't we weren't on the brink of divorce or anything like that. It was just we knew that there was um you know, we wanted to have more for our marriage and, and, you know, didn't really have any expectation going into it or what it was going to look like. But the vulnerability side, the compassionate side, the empathetic side are all things that are very difficult, I think, for most guys are things that I've really had to Not work to overcome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I think yeah, the, the emotions is one thing, but there is a vulnerability that comes along with that. You that just we don't can, like to sit and talk about yeah. your feelings? Yeah, that's like, right. What? Yeah. <laughs> to echo Kyle, thanks for sharing. First off, that's, that's yeah. hard to talk about. So yeah. thank you. Um, I, I want to I wanna take it now and, and I want to say this too for, for you know, I, I, I got almost emotional just, and this is the hard, cause there's, there's, there's sometimes there's a, there's, there's always a, a, a villain or there's always a, someone being rescued, right? Mm -hmm. And there's just always this, mm -hmm. this tension, but I, I, when you were explaining the story, like I couldn't almost get, you know, he was just going through a lot too. A lot. Like it was, it was heavy. Oh, yeah. And I don't, I'm not making that as an excuse or, no. or a, none of that, not, a, not at all. But I mean. It is so important for us to be open with other people. Yeah. Like it's so important for us to 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 be vulnerable, to to lay it out there and let people. We are human beings. Yeah, you're we're we're human. That's right, right. We are not God. We will never be God, and so like we have to we have to let people know what's going on inside. I know when I was battling with my anxiety and my fear, it was if I didn't let it out. It was, I don't know what I was going to do. Yeah. Right. Like I didn't, I was going to crumb, I was crumbling, yeah. you know? And so, um, you know, I think a lesson from, you know, uh, silver lining in this is maybe hopefully someone listening is maybe they're going through something close to that. Right. And it's, it's, it's not quite there where y'all's ended up, but maybe it's, it's close and, and just, just be vulnerable. Like just yeah. be open. Just be talk open. About it. Talk yeah. about it. And and you're gonna realize you're not alone. You're yeah. gonna realize um if you're open to the right person that you're you're accepted and loved and and they're gonna love you through whatever's going That's on. That's right. Yeah. And That's so right. um I wanna, I just, can I ask a lighthearted question though? You know, all of the you you obviously got lots of attention nationwide and everything with the growth. <laughs> I'm wondering who who's who's the coolest person that you met? Oh my gosh! Oh, oh that's a great question. Uh, yeah, our I didn't even think about that. Our... I, I'm thinking pastor. Oh, no, yeah, so oh, pastor okay. and then famous person. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gosh. oh wow! Okay, gosh. Random, but yeah. squirrel moment. But yeah. Okay, so oh wow, pastor. I've met a lot of um. Oh gosh, they're just they're, I, they're I'm feeling different people for different reasons. Okay, I'm gonna say Stephen Furtick. I was hoping you'd say well, that. and and here I've got different pastors for different reasons, and uh, shout outs. Pastor Stephen. Make Pastor sure we tag Steven. him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and if he's listening, we want to be. We, uh, you're more than welcome to come. So we got the the honor to um, preach, Jeremy preached for yeah. him a couple of times. And um, here's what I love about Pastor Stephen. The first time I met him, you know, I'm I'm a woman and I'm in these rooms and it, it just is what it is. And sometimes when you're in these type of rooms, you get, you get overlooked. You know, well, the men just want to talk with the men. Yeah. You know, I get it. No harm harm done. But um, I will never forget when I met um, Pastor Stephen in the green room there at Elevation. And just it just felt so good. He's so personable. Mm. And I, so, I know sometimes, I don't know how you guys perceive him. And I've, I've I, love, heard, I listen to him. I week. love yeah. him. I think he's <laughs> yeah, incredible. Yeah, him, yeah. But like behind closed doors and you hear things and you're just like, oh, he's kind of scary. I don't know. But he was just so, um, I don't know, personable. I loved how he looked in my eyes and kept eye contact with me. And he just asked me all kinds of questions. Oh, and wow. my husband's standing right there. And I'm like, you, you don't want to talk to him? He's like, <laughs> no, so I want to cool. talk to you. <laughs> awesome. And that means a lot. 
lot yeah. to a female. It just it just does. And um right. Reinhardt Bunky was another oh, yeah. one. And just so because cool. just because my goodness, you know, like he's just done so much yeah. for so many people and and that was pretty yeah. awesome. Yeah. Well, I think that's cool that you that you said that about Stephen Furtick because um of the way that like I was thinking this too, like Jeremy's in the pulpit, but you're right there. Like yeah. you're every bit as involved oh, in yeah. the startup and the church field <laughs> yes. and everything. I'm sure you were doing all kinds of things behind the scenes or many hats. when you didn't yes. have very many, yeah. you know, volunteers serving at the time. You, you probably had a launch team, but you know, when all that people show up, you, yeah. you were quickly outnumbered. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you played a key role in that growth. Um, so yeah, I think that's, too. that's really cool. It was. Um, so one of the other things that you mentioned telling a story, you we really haven't talked much about this at all, but um, you said that uh, you didn't feel like not uh, or every open door wasn't an opportunity. Yeah. You stole my question. I'm sorry. No, that was that was. I, I, I'm I'm interested but, and I'm intrigued now too. Um, it caught my attention. Yeah, me because too. I feel like even in my business today. Um, and then I can think of other personal examples. The easiest one that I think about is, is, is on the business side where that is just so true, where you get in it and it's, you feel like it's God ordained because I'm confident that I'm walking in the wisdom of the Lord. But at the same time, I, I might forget to check this, yeah. this opportunity through the Lord. Yeah. I've, I've been guilty of that. And, yeah. and then you have to deal with it and, and, and go through that. Talk more about what you meant by that. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I think there's always opportunities. There's opportunities all around us and there's going to be so many open doors. And, you know, for the longest we did, we, we thought every open door must mean it's a God door. Um, but I don't think that you should walk through that door if that means that it's sacrificing your family, mm. um, you're sacrificing and, and maybe stretching out your staff through too thin. Like there's times when you absolutely should put on the brakes, um, especially in, in the church world. Yeah. Um, you've got to put on those brakes and make sure that you're leading people correctly, that you're spending time with your family. Um, we used to say we don't believe in balance at all. Mm. You know, we believe in a rhythm and sometimes it's fast and sometimes it's slow. And, but, you know, and I'm still, I'm still figuring that out for myself. I can just speak from my experiences yeah. and the things that we went through. And I just know, guys, it was too much. It was too soon. Our foundation was not strong enough. And even in my business today, um, you know, I'm trying to run, like I'm trying to run. And there are times when I just feel like, you know, I'm drowning, you know, because this is a, it's a baby business and God has been so faithful and people who know me in this city have just ran to my rescue and be like, We're, we want to help you. And I'm so thankful for it. Um, and if I allowed myself, because I know how to, I could just say yes to yeah. to every opportunity but if i start to do that then i'm going to miss out on so much and so even in my business i've had to push back a little bit and know my limitations for this this season and to know okay no i need to go learn a little bit more i need to go take a few more classes i need to really just maybe have one or two clients so that i can really um you know just really get to to just be personal with those people and and learn those people and just you know not be stretched too thin for, for my family. So it works both ways. I think there's just times when you have to know like this, this is a green light from the Lord and everything lines up mm. or maybe, maybe there's an open door, but your you know, your staff is just giving you feedback of, uh, I'm not sure. And listen, listen to those yeah. people. You hired them for a reason. Listen to them. And it's okay just to put on the brakes. That opportunity is still going to be there down the road. You're just going to have, you're going to have stronger foundation yeah. and just be able to do even more and do it better. And That's you don't good. sacrifice people when you're doing it. That's good. So I, I'm, I, I've said this in another podcast, but I like to hear, <clears throat> I like to pick up in the conversations stories or or patterns, right? <clears throat> and this is so good for I think the majority of people that we know of that listen to our podcasts that are some of them are very high level 
high net worth, high, I mean, they just, they're, they're go getters all the time. And I think something that defines you, Jennifer, and has defined y'all's family is whatever you guys do, it's explosive growth, right? Like, when y'all were doing the the the, the ministry before, the for whatever the for whatever right explosive growth church explosive growth I think from what I've heard from other your business like it's pretty explosive growth it's doing really good pretty quick right yeah. and what you've what you're teaching us through your life story is you said something you have to you have to gauge that make sure all of it is green lights right and that doesn't necessarily take away the faith aspect of it yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. right it doesn't take away the fact that i got to step out of the boat and go do something That's right right but it aligns with what we've talked about in our past core values it aligns with a uh, why are we doing this and and so it is taught there's a couple opportunities that i'm looking at right now going it's making me go wait a second is this because it's an open door, is it a God open door or is it just an open door because of kind of who we are and what we attract? Right. Yeah. You know, like, you know, I was, I was talking to my, our coach, we share the same coach and we were talking about accountability for a while. And, um, I, I, the Lord hit me really hard with positioned accountability versus postured accountability. Right. And I think it's the same thing for opportunity positioned oppor or position accountability is because of my position. Everyone wants me yeah. to be their accountability partner. Yeah. yeah. Right. Hey, y'all are growing. Hey, I'm going to be your accountability. Yes. Right. Yeah. Because of position, whereas postured is, hey, I just my heart is to be accountable to someone. Yes. Can you help? Same thing when it comes to opportunities. It's like. Is it just because of the people that we attract around us that a door is going to open just because a door is going to open? Yeah. Or is it a God opening door that where we've got to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and go, Lord, is this you opening a door or is it because of my charisma, my ability, my my network, my net worth, whatever it is? Because we could, I mean, essentially everyone at this table can go start something and it'd be an open door yes. yeah. and it do well yes. and it do well yeah. quickly. But is it? Because we've done it in the past and we've done it now, but is it a is it a God door that's being opened? And so I would encourage the listeners to go, hey, learn from Jennifer, right, in this scenario, like, hey, I this is a I believe your business is a God door, but you're even going, hey, I gotta pump the brakes here. Yeah. And it actually takes more faith sometimes to pump the brakes. To pump the brakes. Yeah. Because like I totally get what you're saying. Like because sometimes of who you are, how are you led, or just, you know, just the things you have done, like people naturally will gravitate Correct. to you and look to you. And um it takes more faith sometimes to push back. Trust me, I'm in a season of a lot of unknowns in my life. I've never been here before before. So when I started out in this season, I was just, I mean, I was cashing fishing lines everywhere yeah. to see like, <laughs> so where can catch. I get a bite? <laughs> it's like, okay, I'm going to go with that. Yeah. And, um, you know, but the thing is like the more that I did, the more anxiety I had, mm, like when mm -hmm. I put my head on my pillow, like anxiety, and I couldn't stop thinking about all these things. And so honestly, God has me in a season right now where I am like putting the brakes on and that guys, that takes a lot yeah. of faith, wow. like a lot of just putting my trust in the Lord to mm. say, okay, like, I don't know. But what I do know is I've been trying to do this on my own. And I've been trying to figure all this out on my own. And I've been trying to make things like so many things happen yeah. because I am worried about my future. Yeah. And I just have that personality of like, I will not die. Like we are <laughs> yeah. going, I will not die. Yeah. And so it's taken a lot for me to just say, you know what, God, I release control yeah. and I'm going to pull back and I'm just going to do what you put in front of me for today. That's, That's so, so good. good. Yeah. Random yeah. funny story about you shall not die. <laughs> Freeze came to Texas, my old house. I had beautiful palm trees. Okay? Oh my gosh. I know Gorgeous was palm trees. <laughs> okay. Freeze comes. And I, every time I hear that, someone say that it brings me back. <laughs> I freeze comes snow everywhere. My palm trees, my grass guy comes and goes, they're done. Oh, <laughs> my no. friend, they're done. That's what he tells me. Okay. <laughs> I go, I lay hands on them suckers, oh, no. okay? Because there's because I said, okay, how much to replace them? And he tells me the price. I said, oh, Jesus, insane. no, I can't do this, right? Insane. I lay the hands on them. I said, you shall not die but live. <laughs> and I go to each one of them things. Three weeks later, yeah. every one of them dead. Yeah. But um, did you pull out some anointing oil? It wasn't in the cards. It wasn't in the yeah. cards. They were done, so we had to replace them. But that's funny. Oh wow! So we hear. Uh, 
it's just really, really good. So where I want to, I want to focus on you now. And can I ask you a question that Go. is a, a yes, please. So, you know, with this business now, so your, your business is, um, you design, is it mostly homes? Are you doing commercial? Yeah, at all? But, you know, I, it's a full service design. Okay. I have done commercial, but I'm really just focusing right now. On homes. So, um, I guess the question and, and kind of parlaying from some previous conversations that we've had on a podcast that uh, you aren't privy to yet, but um, we've been talking a lot about um, vision. We've talked about the tie-in to creativity and how you know um, we are all creative persons and people at, at heart because we're made in God's image. Um, I'm curious, you're, you're actually in a business where you have to be creative yeah. to an extent, um, but where was this idea birthed for you? This, this the design, oh, was it, was it always kind of around, even in the midst of the church Were you yeah. always, I mean, I'm sure you were very hands-on yes. with the designing of oh, yes. 100%. The, the church and everything else. I know you, yeah. you, well, you guys were, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, portable anyways, mm -hmm. for a while. Mm -hmm. and, and, um, but even through that process, there is a design hand that needs to be had and how you stage everything. So I'm just curious, where did that where did that come from? Yeah, so we were portable, so lots of scuba wall. If you yeah. know what scuba wall <laughs> is, um, you have to get very, very creative um, when you are in a high school or a junior high or a movie theater. Like, how do we make this excellent? How do we make everything look good? And so, yes, I I usually headed up that, that team, anything um, that – you know, design wise. Um, but we did purchase a building in the woodlands and it was, how did, how do I put this? Um, it was like a broken down BMW, like a uh -huh. 1980s <laughs> broken down BMW. And um, we literally purchased it and I was given like a dime budget. And so we went in and just made it, you know, made it look beautiful. Mm. Um, got to work with some of the most amazing architects here in Houston. They actually, you know, do people all over the world. And it's not just churches, they like, like corporations, everything. So it was really fun just getting a peek into their world and working hand in hand with those guys. And then um, we were in a building. Um, we were actually we purchased a building for our main campus in Memorial. We purchased the silos, mm -hmm. which is very historic. And we were so excited. It was a huge project. And so we would have weekly meetings, design meetings, and, um, you know, just learned so much, you know, but before then, like it's always been there. I've always loved design. I can remember when we were first married, we had no money. We were youth pastors. I remember we made like $740 every two weeks and had two kids. And you know, when you're below po poverty in Louisiana, it's bad. It's pretty bad. Yeah, it's really, really bad. Yeah, 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 it's true. And so, but we were always blessed. But um, just, you know, creating a home, you know, being a homemaker and a, and a wife and a mom and just trying to create a peaceful place, a place that you can be proud of um, when you're young. So it just started with moving around furniture and, you know, going, wow. you know, to thrift stores and things like that. And so I've always loved it, but it didn't come alive until I started doing the church and just realized um, what I could do and how much I loved it. Yeah, that's really cool. So I, when I overview these things in podcasts, it's for my own painting the picture in my own <laughs> yeah. mind. So Let's we've, recap it first. We're recapping. So <laughs> come to Houston, blowing up. Then we see a moment in your story where there's a quote unquote fall. Yeah. Right? It's a, it's the, it's the, the, what would it seem to be this, you know, perfect deal falls. And then we, we see you rising from the ashes and, and, and see you moving forward in this. And you already told us, you already gave us one really good nugget about, Hey, every open door is not a God door, which that's, is, I'm taking that for me today. Um, what are some, what are just, I know probably God has taught you so much through this. Um, can you, can, so a lot of our listeners, they, you know, I've mentioned this in the past, but like some of our listeners, their kids are going through cancer. Yeah. Some of us are there, um, you know, they've been divorced, right? Yeah. Chances are the majority of, unfortunately in America, the at least half of our listeners have been divorced, mm -hmm. right? Um, 
What are some things that the Lord has just been teaching you or helping you or guiding you through this process for you? Because I can tell you this, you know, for someone that has been in the position that you've been in and has, for what people would want to say, I've seen the limelight, like I've seen, I've been, mm-hmm. quote unquote, in this world. You were mm-hmm. famous in that world. I know that that's weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's true. No, in the church world, right? It, it is. It's true. And so, so you've been there and now you're coming out of this and it, it's, it's, but what has God taught you through this whole, like, what are a couple key things that you look back or where yeah. you're in now? What has God taught you through that? Oh, wow. Um, so, so much, so much. Um, it's been quite the journey. I, I'm not a stranger to a lot of loss, a lot of pain. Um, you know, I'll just really, really short, um, you know, at the age of four, I was molested mm. by my brother. Mm. Um, you know, I, I've i had lots of close calls as far as other family members, um, attempted rapes, um, things like that. And just, you know, abandonment. Um, teenage years were horrible. You know, found my identity in men mm. because I just didn't know my worth. And so, you know, I'm not a stranger to pain. Jeremy and I, we, we separated early on in our marriage. So I had, um, a newborn baby. I was pregnant again with Jesse and, um, had major postpartum, did not, did not know what postpartum was. And so we ended up separating and we were separated for like 27 months. And, mm. During that time is when I really carved out my relationship with the Lord for the first time. And um, I just, you know, just, I don't know, like I dug out a faith journey during that time. I, it was amazing what God did in my life and ultimately put my marriage back together just for it to fall apart years, years later was devastating. Having said all that, um, Sometimes I think before we can move forward, we have to take a look back. And by my by me taking a look back, I was able to look at those times and all the things that God has brought me through because he's brought me through so much pain, so much devastation. And you know, I I remember feeling like just the weight of this divorce, the the fear and the anxiety. And I mean, I'm human. So, you know, I have a lot of faith and I love Jesus, and but I'm very human. So I have felt all those things and it can be crushing. And I'll never forget one time just hearing from the Lord. And he says, remember what I did for you. Mm. And so I, I took a look back and I remember going through that 27 month separation and how how God sustained me through that. And he was so good to me through that. And I mean, I was so young. I was like 22 years old, you know, little bitty babies. I had no money. I had nothing. I didn't know what was going to come. You know, Jeremy was wanting a divorce and I wasn't wanting a divorce. I didn't know what God was going to do that, but he came through. And so that's what I hold on to today. I just remember like every trial, every situation, it doesn't matter how bad. And there was some things that were really, really bad. I've overcome every single one of them. And I've always overcome it by keeping my eyes on God, like having a real relationship with Him, knowing and trusting that even though it may feel painful for today, He's got me tomorrow. Yeah. Like He's got all of my tomorrows. He, he has my future, you know, planned out. And I just, I just know like God didn't bring me this far to just, this is all he wrote. Yeah, you know, right. he's got so much more for me. Yeah. And I'm just, y'all, I mean, I'm just clinging on to that. Like, I won't let go. Like, you know, I I won't die. Yeah. It's just, I'm not, I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to, yeah. I'm, I'm going to keep going forward. And the one thing that has, the other thing that's really helped me through this that I feel like I don't know everything yet. There's a lot of mystery in my story. But the one thing that I feel like I am finding purpose is these other women who have started reaching out to me. So a lot of Mm. pastor's wives who the same thing has happened or just women, you know, period. And um, I'm just focusing on them. There is a pastor's wife right now, um, ex-pastor's wife, 
this happened to her, same thing, like three years ago, and she is still going through it. And her situation is far worse than mine, but she's precious and she's worthy of someone coming alongside of her and just holding her hand and just saying, you know, I don't know what I can do but I'm not going to leave your side. And I'm just finding so much purpose um, and just walking with other women Mm. with, with through their pain, you know, doing what I wish somebody would have done for me. Mm. I'm finding so much purpose. And so if God, if God can take this and use it and um, allow me to be a part of someone else's process, you know, that's, that's amazing. That's amazing. That's a win. So good. Who was the person or maybe people in your life? So you, I caught on to the age. So you were saved 19? 19. And then this was happening at 22. Yeah. So you're three years. Yeah. You're, that's a baby. You're in, who was there for you in that gap where you guys were separated that was, hey, you need to draw closer to God? Was there anybody like that in there? You know what? I had to kind of carve it out for myself, wow. honestly. Um, you know, I had it, – it was weird. I, I had my family, but it's funny that you ask me this. Um and my sisters hear this, don't hate me for this. <laughs> but, you know, I remember – calling my sisters and trying to talk to them about my situation. And I couldn't get a word in. Mm. I couldn't get a word in. And it finally, it, it, it made me so upset because literally it was so bad. It was like, you know, I'm talking, I'm wanting to talk about, you know, my situation, what's going on and maybe getting some advice. And literally I can't get a word in. Mm. And um, I really think God did that on purpose. I, wow. I felt like he had me isolated for that whole period of time because I did keep trying to go to find other outlets. And um, ultimately I felt God say, you know what you, I want to make this to where you just learn how to depend on me. And mm. what it caused me to do is um, literally just stay in the word of God. I mean, guys, I, I mean, other than work and my children, that's all I did. Like I dated God during that season mm. and really carved out a relationship and that that 27 months was so painful, but I've never regretted that time with the Lord. Like I, it was necessary. Yeah. Speak to the moms real quick. Five kids, you're busy, but you said you, you, you I love that term day to the Lord. And also you, my, my dedication to knowing God and being close to him was what got me through this. Speak to the moms that are like my wife, seven, five, two, just in diapers, just oh, yeah. speak to that a little bit. And, yeah. and, and then, you know, another one that's arguably could be in diapers. That's 33. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, I'm not, I'm not even going to go there. Right, that's right. Thank you so much. I'm not going there. <laughs> you know, I once had this lady um, tell me that there are seasons in our lives and to recognize the season that you're in and not be too hard on yourself. Mm-hmm. And so I think speaking to, you know, a mother who has those little ones, I would tell her, you know, don't be so hard on yourself. Like God knows right where you are. He yeah. knows your heart. And um, it's hard. It's hard. I mean, I, I was a pastor's wife. And can I tell you, I didn't read my Bible every day. Yeah, yeah. You know, I yeah, mean, maybe yeah. Wait, it was what? just, Wait, you know, maybe it was just like a little scripture of the day, yeah, no right. context or anything. And I, I did what I could do. Yeah. And that's all God wants from us. He just wants you to do what you can do. And I think especially as a woman in this area with the little ones and everything, we're trying to like spin all the plates and make everything happen. And we beat ourselves up. We can be so hard on ourselves. And, um, you know, just have grace for yourself. Yeah. You're, you're doing better than what you think you are. And yeah. God knows your heart. And the great thing about God is he can handle all of it. Yeah. You know, he can handle like your sadness. He can handle if you're angry at him. I mean, we, God and I have had some, some talks. I mean, we, there's been times during the situation where I'm like, God, are you even real? Mm-hmm. Are you even real? Like yeah. I'm, I'm in a place where I don't even know, you know, he can handle everything. Mm-hmm. So just, just bring it all to him mm-hmm. and just, you know, if all you have time for is, you know, a moment where you're like, help me, Jesus, you know, yeah. help me Jesus with these babies or help me yeah. Jesus with my husband yeah, yeah. who's in the diaper still. No, <laughs> um, and that's all you have time for, that's right, that's you right. know, and that's okay. Yeah. There, later on down the road, you'll be in a 
different season yeah. where you can go and spend more time with the Lord and do Bible studies. And I I used to hear my mother-in-law talk about, you know, praying and stuff, and, and she didn't mean it for this to happen, but it would make me feel bad. Um, the way she talked about her prayer time with the Lord, and that wasn't her intention, but my takeaway was, well, that's the type of relationship I should have. Mm. But she was in a different season mm-hmm. than I was. And so just realize the season that you're in and go with that. It's really good. Yeah. It's really good. Um, are we okay on time? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I want to, what is the next, and I want you to describe or, or, cause I know you've been, so first off, you've been through all of this. And most people go through this in private. You went through it in public. Yeah. Right. And to see who you are today and to hear the, I feel the the, the life in your voice, right, um, is extremely encouraging um, and extremely just, it's it's needed for people to be able to go, hey, you, there is tomorrow. You can get yeah. through this and God is faithful. Um, what? What is the next? I'm going to put one of these questions on there for you. <laughs> next five years. Oh boy. What is the next five years like? Because I know the way you're talking, God has given you something. Yeah. He has. Yeah. And then I want to tell you something at the end of that. Um, but God has given you what is next? What is the next five years look like? Oh wow. Um, oh my gosh. Yeah, God God has given me something. Um if you're comfortable sharing with no, it. Okay. Because yes. well, it's in line with the vision that we we were talking about yeah. earlier. There's yeah. gotta yeah. be a vision. You back into it with the creativity, but the creativity is because we've got to figure out how to navigate it and, and yeah. get to that vision yes. that God gave us. Yes. Um I'm probably gonna be all over the place. Be all over. Just yeah. hang I love in that. there with Just me. Just go. We're going with yeah. flow. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, gosh, it's been messy. Yeah. It's been messy. Really trying to navigate divorce, forgiveness, mm. um, lots of hurt, lots of pain, um, managing my children and walking, you know, with them through their pain, and it's it's just a lot to have to deal with, and yeah. a lot of fake it till you make it. You know, mm, I'm sure. just like, okay, we're gonna push through, and um, not every day is the same right now you know oftentimes i tell people you know you may be seeing me this this, today like this tomorrow i mean i'm human it may be a totally different situation you know (laughs) it is all a process but having said that um you know we talked a little bit about anxiety we talked a little bit about the future and how we don't know how everything's going to pan out and this this is a scary time it's the first time in my life that i've really been on my own Mm -hmm. um you know i'm 40 uh 43 I don't even know anymore. Oh my God. We're going to go 43. We're going to go 43. Um, yeah. You know, and here I am, you know, I've, I've been in ministry for the last 20 yeah. years. That was ripped away from me. And guys, like, I, I still feel like a pastor. Mm. Like, I didn't want that to go away from me, you know? And so there's just been a lot. And with all that comes um, a lot of anxiety at times, mm. a lot of fear. And so recently, very, very recently, where I feel like the Lord has me, um, He spoke to me one night when I just had crippling anxiety. And He said, are you okay today? Did I provide for you today? Mm. And I verbally answered, like, yes, like, I'm okay today. And then I just felt, you know, him say, you know, to me, well, then don't worry about your tomorrows. And um, the next thing that I felt from the Lord was just do what is in front of you. And so ever since I've been doing that and literally just tried to stop worrying about what is next, um, it's almost like God, like it, it wasn't a long thing. It's like immediate, like God's like, okay, finally you let go of the reins. And so I'm picking it up and he's been making things happen so rapidly, but, um, it's still all a mystery, but I can see the hand of God in it. Mm-hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah, I love ministry. Ministry is just who I am. Um, it's funny before the divorce, before I knew anything, it was towards the end. Um, I remember praying and I remember God telling me so clearly, you're going to speak. 
And I remember calling my girls and even calling Jeremy and telling them, like, I know without a shadow of a doubt that the Lord just told me I'm going to speak to where they were all like, hmm, okay. Because if you knew me, I've always shied away from the stage. Like Jeremy was the one in the spotlight. I just didn't like to be on the stage that much. And it gave me anxiety. But it's just like I knew without a shadow of a doubt, like God is calling me to speak. And then everything blows up. And everything happened. And I literally had some moments where I'm like, God, like I have one of the biggest stages, like a world wide stage. Like literally we would stream to people. We could speak to anybody all over the world. I felt like you were calling me to preach, speak or whatever. Mm -hmm. And now like I have no stage. I have nothing. And so trying to like trust him and figure that part of it, like I really think this had to happen mm -hmm. for whatever reason. And I've been camping out in the story of Joseph. And we all know that Joseph had a God-given dream. He was a little proud. He was a little sure. arrogant about it at times. Um, but it was a God-given dream. And then we find that Joseph went on a detour when his brothers sold him into slavery. And uh, he just was taking a detour. He, he, he ended up, you know, at the king's um, at the king's place, and yeah. he was like the man, you know, to the king. And so not not a bad gig. Sure. Yeah. Still not his full potential, full yeah. purpose. That's not what ultimately God was calling him to, but he was still being faithful. He was still a good man. It was just a little detour. And then, you know, Potiphar's wife, you know, said um, he, you know, tried to rape her. And, you know, here everybody believed her and uh, he was ultimately thrown into prison. He was a good man. Still, he did everything right. He did not deserve that. Yeah. He did not deserve that. But he was thrown into prison and um, it was a death. It probably felt like the death of his dream. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was forgotten. You know, we all know the story. Like mm -hmm. the, the guys came and, you know, he interpreted their dreams and they got out of prison. And he's like, remember me. They don't remember him. And so I'm sure there was some pretty dark days for him and it felt like a death. And as God, you know, has me camping out here, I'm realizing that a lot of things like that stage, like Hope City, um, just, you know, even just there's things in my life that I've been trying to like just hold on to, just mm -hmm. even the the pastoral calling that I feel like God is saying those things have to completely die mm -hmm. before I can resurrect them. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just open-handed at this point. I'm learning how to be open-handed and as painful as that stripping away can be, I'm, I'm just wanting God to strip everything away. I'm hoping it's ministry. I feel like it's ministry. Um, this lady, this pastor's wife that I've been helping, um, I just had a church write a $3,500 check to her and, um, you know, I've been advocating for her and helping her where she can't speak for herself and the feel like the, the fulfillment mm -hmm. that I'm getting from that. Mm -hmm. um, God's speaking to me in that area. And so I don't know, like, I know what I want. <laughs> I feel this pulling, yeah. but we'll just see. We'll just see if that answers your question. Yeah. I don't know, no, but I just is, feel God's in it somewhere. That's I certainly so hope so. Good. Yeah, uh, as our AG friends, my God, that was good. <laughs> that was that was no, that was seriously good. And what I just throughout this whole podcast, what I saw just for you, Jennifer, and I want to just speak directly to you. I, I got a picture of Jacob wrestling, and um, and even though you're coming out from the ashes of this, you are still in a wrestling match with God. Yeah, and um. I really feel um, like Jacob looked at him and said, do not leave me before you bless me. Um, I really feel there's going to come a moment where you are able to look at God and say, okay, I'm, I'm done wrestling now. Bless me. And he's going to bless you. Wow. And so it's going to be a release from you to where this wrestling that you've been with him. And there's times where we need to wrestle with God. Like there just is. There's times in our soul we just need yeah. to wrestle, but then the the after the wrestling comes the restoration, and and so I think you're getting close to where like you just described that whole story. You're gonna look at him and go, okay, I'm done wrestling. 
bless me. And he's going to do what he did for Jacob. Wow. He's going to bless mm. you. Wow. So be encouraged with that. Yeah. Oh, I'm ready. That's awesome. <laughs> any, any yeah. final, any, I just, I, I, I can't thank you enough for being no. here. I, I, I can, I'm sitting here listening to your story and I think we've just scratched the surface that we need to have you back uh, yeah. uh, just to, no, just to you. keep the conversation going because you just bring such a unique perspective. Um, of just all that you've that you've gone through obviously i i i didn't really know much about your background and coming up but there's just the the overcomer like you you described yourself yeah. that's just it's that's there and i think that's where so many people can just um gain so much value from when when you continue to um have a microphone in your face and tell the story i think i think that's a great place for you to be um, but thank you again so much for thank sharing and being, yeah. being vulnerable. Awesome. Um, just incredible. Would you feel comfortable praying us oh, out of here? Absolutely. Okay. Oh God, today has been so good. And I'm just so thankful for this opportunity for me to share my story and just how, how good you are. And I'm just praying that, um, that every word, every word that comes from this podcast today, Lord, that it just that it ministers to someone yes. who needs to hear it, God, that it ministers far and wide. And because there's somebody out there who's struggling that just needs to hear a little bit of hope. And hopefully that comes from, God, what you've done in my life. And if you can do it for me, you can do it for anybody. And I just pray that you bless these guys and you bless what they're doing, God. You bless this podcast. I just love how they're um, they're talking about ministry and they're talking about God and they're also talking about how to get out there and just win and win big. And mm -hmm. so bless this ministry, God. Bless this podcast. We we need it. We need it out there far and wide. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thanks for listening. We hope that you feel encouraged by today's episode. Help us reach the masses by leaving a review and subscribing to the show. We'll see you next time.